Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar on highlights in Simulation X 4.0. My name is Christoph, I'll be your host this evening um, and with me is Thomas Hofmann. He is our Solution Marketing Manager for ESI's Simulation X and corresponding engineering services. Um, and he will talk you through the new features in Simulation X tonight. Um, Thomas graduated from the Dresden University of Technology back in 2012 with a diploma in mechanical engineering and he joined the Simulation X team in 2013. The presentation itself will last about 45 minutes, maybe 50, you will see how it goes. And at the end then we'll have a short Q&A session of 10 to 15 minutes depending on your feedback. Um, basically, there are two ways of asking questions uh, throughout the presentation. You can either type in a question in the control panel on your right-hand side, or if you prefer talking to us, um, um, you can uh, simply raise your virtual hand, also uh, this small icon on your control panel, and then um, I'll put you through and then we can have a proper discussion. If there should be more questions that we can handle throughout the Q&A session, we'll surely follow them up then afterwards. Um, so rest assured, we'll get back to you. So that's basically the technical part. So I'll hand over now to Thomas and enjoy his presentation. Thank you very much, Christo, for your introduction and welcome to our webinar, Simulation X 4.0, Highlights of the New Version. Um, when we want to talk about all the highlights in details um, today and all the new feature, um, we wouldn't have uh, webinar for about 60 minutes. We would have to talk about um, several hours. So this um, webinar today um, shall give you an overview as a basis of discussion when you are interested um, to know more about um, certain features or certain new modules to get in contact with us and to know more about these features and models presented here. Um, for each major release, our software and library developers file in numerous places in Simulation X to simplify and also to accelerate your pre-processing, modeling, simulation and post-processing processes. And not just to increase the speed and your workflows, but also to increase the quality of the results you obtain from your simulations. In addition, the new libraries and new features and new models, they open up new fields of application, additional to the um, fields of application you are already using Simulation X for. The first um, topic today will be the new graphical user interface. We um, came up with a completely new concept, um, the ribbon concept, and the ribbon concept um, shall give you better context sensitivity um, and um, accelerate your workflow through um, clearly arranged um, interface and efficient um, menus and uh, efficient um, yeah, mouth pass, mouth ways. The graphical user interface is, besides the libraries and solvers, the heart of Simulation X. Um, a good user interface is clearly structured. Uh, which makes it easier to get started with the software Simulation X and, uh, and enables efficient work with just a few mouse clicks and um, short mouth pass. So Simulation X has been known in the world of system simulation for many years already for its easy to use interface. Um, however, uh, knowledge in the field of user interface economics has also developed further in the recent years and based on these insights we came up with the um, with the user interface in um, Simulation X 4.0, um, which increases further the um, ergonomics and the um, speed of um, workflows. We won't go in detail um, on the graphical user interface in this webinar. Um, we have a special webinar just dedicated for efficient working with the new graphical user interface um, next Wednesday and next Thursday. The presenter will be Sebastian Klutzner, our solution marketing, uh, no, our solution manager for system simulation. I am the solution marketing manager, so Sebastian is the solution manager, I'm sorry. Um, the content of the webinar next week will be 
uh, at first um, to give an overview on the structure of the new graphical user interface, including um, the backstage and the ribbon concept, and also Sebastian will present um, how to use floaties and um, further new feature in the um, graphical user interface for efficient workflows. Um, you can register at esi-group.com/events. It's the same page um, where you're also registered for. Um, this webinar. But just to give you an idea for those who haven't yet tried out Simulation X by themselves, how this new graphical user interface looks like. So what you discover already um, at the top of the window is there's a completely new toolbar. And this completely new toolbar um, is according to the ribbon con concept. This means um, according to the task where, which are you doing, like when you are doing model, modeling, then you are in a modeling ribbon. This means you have all these buttons and tools available you need for the modeling process when you are then in the um, simulation process, then you have a different um, set of um, buttons and tools available which you need for simulation, for example, solver settings and so on. And this um, so-called um, context sensitivity ensures that you have always the tools and um, buttons um, at hand you need for your task, so it saves you time, you don't have to go through many sub-menus and you have a better overview um, what kind of tools you have available which um, help you to your, your task. And also it reduces the number of uh, mouse clicks and especially um, the shorter mouse distances are op um, achieved with the so-called floaties for example, um, which you can see here in this um, picture. So this um, floaty is a separated toolbar which pops up, for example, when I'm in the modeling um, process in the diagram view and I'm drawing such a rectangle. Um, I have a float on top of the rectangle where I can um, do immediately some rotations or I can um, set the, the color. So I can do it um, straight at the place where I'm um, drawing my rectangle and I don't have to go all the way um, on top of my, my mouse and in the menu. So it saves you a lot of time and a lot of um, mouse menu, a um, lot of uh, mouth distances. And Further details um, next week then in the webinar with um, Sebastian. But it's not just the graphical user interface itself. Also um, in the uh, 3D view we came up with a couple of new features. So the first one is the um, collision de detection. So the collision detection is a post-processing feature. This means you're first doing your simulation as usual and then in the animation mode you can detect collisions between um, one or any number of uh, moving bodies. So when there is a collision between two bodies, um, you see it um, either in the um, window, you see here there's a collision, so I see uh, on the red frame here that um, this part is in collision with another part, and also I can see um, in the output window that there had been a collision. Um, it stated um, that there had been a collision, and at what time there had been a collision, and which um, bodies are involved in the collision. To configure um, your collision, for the configuration of your um, collision detection, um, you will use the 3D Scene Explorer. The 3D Scene Explorer, yeah, Explorer you can see on the right side. Um, it was introduced in Simulation X um, 3.9 and it serves as an interface to do um, any settings um, for the 3D view, including now with Simulation X um, 4.0, also the collision detection. Another new feature in the 3D view are the dynamic labels. Dynamic labels mean you can visualize um, either parameter results or any text um, in your 3D view, and this text doesn't have to be um, static, it can be dynamic, so when, it, when there are re results um, during your simulation, um, this text um, changes according to your res results, and you can either link these dynamic labels um, to, the, to a body, um, as in this case here, the um, dynamic label is linked to this um, 
hydraulic um, cylinder. So when I'm moving the, then the whole body, um, because I'm moving the um, 3D view, or um, the, there are some some movements. This label will move with the body um, where it is linked to. Um, the other way is to link the dynamic label to the model, um, as it is um, here. So this means when I'm moving here my um, cylinder and my um, excavator arm, um, this label stays fixed at the, that place. And also the dynamic labels they are configured in the um, 3D Scene Explorer. So the Simulation X platform does not just come with a graphical user interface in the 3D view. Um, also, um, post-processing and simulation are a core of our um, simulation platform. And um, for automatic um, simulation runs, we introduced in Simulation X 3.9 the Simulation Task Manager. And now the Simulation X Task Manager also ha has a feature for automatic uh, model validation. So it means um, you have um, a set of uh, models. You are um, computing them automatically, and you can compare them with reference re results. For example, this um, comes in quite handy when you are developing um, your own model libraries, and you are doing changes on the model library. And you want to see, OK, do these changes affect the results of my models I already built up in a, further, in a previous version of my model library? And um, because we are um, in numeric simulation, um, the results from one to another simulation run, they, won't, they will never be exactly the, the same. There will always be tiny deviations. And that's not um, a sign for um, bad quality or of an issue with my um, simulation, with my model or with my used model library. Small deviations. Yeah, it's normal for numerical um, simulation, but it depends. When the deviation exceeds a certain range, so then I have an invalid um, re result. And you can see it um, in the screenshot. Um, in this example, the red line are my reference values. So the um, blue line are the upper boundary, and um, the green line, this is the lower boundary of my um, tolerance range. The range I tolerate um, for my um, results. And um, in case the um, simulated um, the test results, they are now in this um, a little bit lighter red, red color. When they um, touch or cross this um, set boundaries, I get a, a warning um, that they are invalid res results. I can see it here um, on these marks that there have been um, a couple of um, invalid re results, so they had been just a few. They getting very much more. And also, I have an output window where I can see, OK, um, in which of the several models I was testing had been valid and invalid results, because I just, I, it's not just that I can test one um, model against one reference model. I can do it with huge sets, 500 models to test against 500 reference models, for um, instance. And also, when I see, OK, there had been an invalid model, I can go deeper into the model and can have a look, OK, which results in this um, model had been valid and which had been invalid. So where had been the problem exactly? To go further on. Um, Many of you um, might be familiar with the functional mockup interface. For those who have not heard of it be before, functional mockup interface is an open standard. Um, it is um, developed and managed by the Modelica Association, and it's an open standard for exchanging um, simulation models, dynamic simulation models, um, throughout the whole uh, development process between different tools and also between different um, simulation methods, databases, and so on. Um, the Simulation X team is involved for many years in the um, several projects of the Modelica Association, and also we had been um, from the beginning on part of the um, functional mockup interface project. And um, for those who know Thorsten Blochwitz, um, 
uh, Thorsten Blochwitz, he's a member of the um, Simulation X um, team. Um, he's the deputy project leader of um, the functional mobile interface project. So, um, because we are part of this um, uh, project in the Modelica Association, um, we are um, quite familiar with the technology and we can make sure that these um, functional mock-up units, these functional mock-up units, these are the models who are then um, transferred between the different um, tools and different um, simulation models are um, handled and computed um, very efficient in Simulation X. And for this, to increase the efficiency for computation of functional mock-up units um, in Simulation X, um, Simulation X 4.0 is now able to um, compute um, FMU um, parallelized. Parallelized, yeah, parallelized. Um, and this means that um, when you have multi core computers, the computation times are re reduced, um, either for um, time consuming functional mock up um, units or when you include one or more time consuming functional mock up units in a time consuming. Um, simulation X model. There you can also see that you will have a very much increased um, computation performance. A uh, time-consuming simulation X model can be when it's um, very, very, very large, when my system is very large, or when it's very complex with many different um, physical domains included, or when I want to have a look at really high frequency effects and so on. But it's not just a par parallel um, computation. Also, a new master algorithm with interpolation um, can achieve either um, uh, with the same um, computing performance a higher accuracy of your FMI based co simulation or when I want to keep my accuracy when it's um, when it's uh, suitable for my application I can have a higher um, computation um, performance through larger um, communication steps. So these two features, they are for functional mock-up interface for co-simulation. For uh, model exchange and co-simulation alike, we have also an easier handling of um, functional mock-up units in Simulation X 4.0 through um, the support of multidimensional inputs and also multidimensional outputs and parameters. So it gets very much easier to include such multidimensional um, functional mock-up units in your uh, system simulation model in Simulation X. Now I've given an overview of, of the platform. Um, next we want to go into new models to open up new applications or um, make it easier for, for, for you to um, set up se um, certain um, simulation models. The first module we want to talk about is the new model um, driving ma maneuvers. So it includes a library for um, multi-body system uh, wiggle models. The motivation here was to integrate this um, three-dimensional wiggle dynamics behavior into wiggle systems um, evaluations. With wiggle systems, um, we mean either um, control systems, you have different control systems such, such as electrical um, controls, but there are also hydraulical um, controls, especially also in um, trucks and buses, um, but there are uh, more um, subsystems in such a week like the powertrain, the suspension, the brakes, and so on. And um, all these subsystems, um, they are influenced by the wheel di dynamics. So for example, when I um, have a um, severe lane change, it affects my suspension. And on the other way, um, the wheel dynamics it itself is also um, influenced by my controls or by my suspension or brakes. So when you imagine when I have um, weaker brakes on one side, it will affect my wheel dynamics. And the solution we have now, um, the so-called uh, driving maneuver so solution, it's especially made for um, easy modeling and easy parameterization. Parameterization, um, so um, you are able to quickly set up um, wiggle dynamics models for evaluating 
um, the um, interdependencies with your Weagle subsystems, and also they are suitable for real-time analysis like software in the loop or hardware in the loop applications. When I have um, simulation models, there's always the um, question, where do I get the parameters from? So when you have own test benches or when you have um, parameters by experience, you can use those in the wheel dynamics um, models. But um, if you don't know which parameters to take and you don't have your own testing facilities, you can get the whole um, solution out of one hand because we are working together with in institutes on the um, Dresden University of Technology here in Germany and um, they have the test benches where they can um, uh, measure all the parameters needed for our Weagle um, dynamics uh, solution in Simulation X. A use case um, to illustrate the application of um, such Weagle dynamic models. So the Weagle dynamics, they are included in this um, model here. Um, it is connected to a 1D um, powertrain um, model on the uh, on the right side, we have an engine and we also have um, controls. So here we want to investigate um, the influences of the wiggle dynamics on the drivetrain and vice versa to test, for example, different drivetrain um, settings and also um, to test an, um, or first to, to develop and then also to test the um, controls of um, our drivetrain. Okay, now I've been a little bit too quick. I have to, okay, today I have to start it manually. Yeah, this is um, taken from the 3D view in Simulation X from this new model driving maneuvers. What you see here is a standardized driving maneuver, the severe double lane change. And um, on the right side, we see then the um, results um, of this maneuver on the roll, pitch, and chaw angles. And um, also in the bottom right corner, we see the angular velocity um, yeah, in this driving maneuver. And now, these effects you can use to um, evaluate, okay, how is this influencing um, my um, suspension, for example, or my, my brakes, or when I'm adjusting my suspension or brakes, um, what are the results now in um, regards of the um, angles and velocities. The next new module I want to talk about is called the System Reliability Analysis. Here the motivation had been um, to evaluate and predicting uh, um, the behavior of a machine or a plant also under the influence of manufacturing tolerances, wear and defects. So it doesn't mean we are not um, simulating the wear itself, but um, we, when we, when, when we have, um, when we can describe the, the, the wear, for example, we can have a look, okay, is there an influence on my um, system behavior or maybe there's no influence because I have redundant um, systems who then um, can compensate when there are, um, when there is a defect or when I have wear on at a place or how severe are the um, influences then of these um, so-called non-nominal um, effects. And um, the solution system reliability analysis consists of um, a set of libraries I will introduce um, later on and also of, um, of a way how to include these um, false, these um, kind of um, non nominal behavior into um, your simulation model on a systematic way and also how to manage them. So we are going now from as designed, from the nominal stage, the simulation of the nominal stage, we are now moving also to simulate um, your system as manufactured. That means um, also, okay, um, with the tolerances and also as an operation over time, when I have aging, when I have wear, or when I have fall over time. So I have uh, um, also now the possibility to include this um, dynamic um, faults. This means also for faults who have um, different properties over time. 
what kind of faults are we talking about? So in a multi-physics um, system, how um, which we are usually simulating in Simulation X, we have um, faults in all the different um, physical domains. We have mechanical faults in joints, in gears, shafts, um, springs, or clutches. So my um, joint or my shaft, it can um, break. My clutch can slip or my um, clutch can be stuck. I have um, electrical faults, for example, there are bad connections or I have um, short circuits. Um, there are also hydraulical faults, for example, my, my line can be leaking or there might be a rupture and the same is in um, the thermal um, elements and the um, thermal lines. Uh, and also in sensors and um, in signals, I can have faults like there can be delays or my sensor um, performance is degrading over um, the time. Um, there might be errors in calibration and so on. And um, yeah. We have now all the different kind of faults, but um, it can get very time consuming when I want to include those faults manually in quite big or complex um, system models. And for those, for these cases, we made some evaluations and we found out that even when we are in different physical do domains, um, the way to describe the faults are quite similar even in the, in the different physical domains. So in this um, example, we have a simple um, oscillator, but an, uh, an oscillator in different um, physical domains. So at the top, we have uh, an electrical oscillator. In the middle, middle, we have a mechanical oscillator. And on on the bottom, we have a hydraulical oscillator. And what do you see here? Um, we have um, a set of faults, so for example, we have um, connector faults or we have grounding faults, and um, they can be described in a, in a similar way um, also beyond the borders of physical do domains. Like here, um, in the electrical domains, um, we have a broken connection of the electric line, or in the mechanical domain, it's a broken mechanical connection, for example, the broken shaft, or in the um, hydraulical domain, um, the hydraulic line is blocked, for example. And these are completely different physical faults, but they can be described um, in a similar way. And this makes it now possible to use a systematic um, approach to describe and also to um, augment these kind of faults. And we are augmenting a model um, with faults by replacing the nominal type of a component by its fault augmented counterpart. And you don't have to do this manually through all the connections and through all the components of your model. We have a convenient interface which helps you to systematically define the candidates for fault augmentation and candidates are here the different components or the different um, connection including filters um, according to the um, type of um, fault or um, do I want to apply fault on connectors, components, or in different uh, physical do domains. So it's a semi-automatic but efficient way to equip um, a simulation model um, with faults. An example which um, shall make it uh, more clear um, what um, type of faults and effects we are talking about. Um, we have here now um, a, a sample model of a um, powertrain with an automatic um, transmission in the middle and on the right side we have a hydraulic model of a automatic transmission and now what kind of faults can occur there and um, these are just examples we can, could augment it with very much more faults but we have the engine the engine can lose power over its lifetime or for example when we have the, the converter the lock up clutch it can slip for example because we have excessive wear um, over the time and, uh, and also excessive um, use um, of such a converter can increase the fluid temperature. So an increased fluid temperature has an eff effect on the um, fluid properties and um, 
therefore also influence on the properties of the whole con converter. And also uh, my wheels, my tires um, are wear down after a couple of years. And so also then um, my tire ground contact is different. Also when we are in the hydraulic side, we can have um, leaks or we can have obstructions near the actuators and so on. All these um, things, they can influence heavily your system behavior um, over time. And with the system reliability analysis, we have now a systematic approach to include um, such kind of non-nominal behavior into your system model. Um, these faults are re reusable, so you can reuse them also for um, different um, models and it's um, with the um, interface it's easy to augment and also to manage your faults. Also in the module system reliability analysis, there are features included to monitor your system conditions according to specific criteria. I will go deeper into detail in the next slides on that because we have a new model also called advanced signal blocks. This is include, um, included um, in the um, system reliability analysis or at least the libraries for signal feature extraction and um, also for, um, for evaluating the influences. Um, it's included in the system reliability analysis, but it's still also available as a separated um, module because it can be, all, of course, used also for further applications. So at first, we're going to signal feature extraction um, library. Um, the signal feature extraction library um, and the motivation there had been to analyze results um, from your simulation or from um, measured data you have. And you want to know, for example, um, what is the time between two pulses from um, in one signal or, or even um, between um, two different um, input signals. Or I want to know uh, what is the time between two events in one input signal. Or another um, possibility where I can use um, the models in the library signal features extraction is to check, um, you can see it quite well in the icon here, if um, an input signal lies within a given band I defined before. And all these elements, they are able to fill out um, numerical effects, for example, noise and stuff. The applications there are um, as described in the slides before in the um, system reliability analysis um, solution, but also um, to for um, pre-processing of uh, measured values, which I want to use further in my simulation, or also to um, extract um, certain properties from my re results, which I want to use at input again for further simulation in um, further model elements. Now I have just, uh, I have first um, extracted the feature, now I want to see, um, okay, what is the effect on my requirements? So um, when I want to check, uh, when I do changes, for example, in my input parameters or when I'm including the non-nominal behavior, Often I'm not interested in every detail, I want to just know, okay, I have um, certain requirements which must be fulfilled so that my, um, that my uh, design or um, my uh, control setup is um, still valid. And now I can use this new mod model library um, to easily um, check if um, a certain requirement is fulfilled not fulfilled or not checked. Not checked means I've run a simulation run, but they uh, didn't have any results which I can use to evaluate are my requirements um, fulfilled or not fulfilled. I can do this either for scalars or also for vectors, and for vectors there are different kinds. Um, of logic, if it is um, fulfilled or not, I can check if there are all requirements fulfilled or if there is at least one requirement that is full, fulfilled or if no the requirements um, are full, fulfilled. And the application here are um, 
yeah, to use for system reliability analysis or also to include it um, with um, integrated um, tool chain combining system simulation with model-based systems engineering. Um, when you are interested in this um, tool chaining combining simulation X um, and model-based um, systems engineering, um, please get in contact with us as we have projects um, developing such kind of um, solutions. We already covered um, the fault scenarios, but also to set um, limits for um, results in variance studies. Um, yeah, when I want to check, okay, I'm variating um, a set of parameters, am I still in the boundaries of my requirements? Also included in the module advanced signal blocks, there's a multi-dimensional map. This one is independent from the use cases I've shown you before, but it's um, it's quite an advanced um, module model element which um, maps n-dimensional maps with independent axes. So the axes are independent in terms of approximation interpolation. So what means an n-dimensional map? It's um, a characteristic map um, with one, two, up to six or seven. More than, than, than seven, it's difficult um, to handle and it's hardly used. So up to seven um, independent axes you can uh, Use, for example, in your characteristic maps and use cases for this, um, for example, are um, when I want to compute a combustion engines, excitation functions as a function of the crank angle, the crankshaft speed, the injection, the temperature. So you see you need um, many more than um, just three di dimension. Or for example, as it was um, shown in a presentation in our last Simulation X user conference um, last November in um, Dresden to describe the behavior of um, shape memory alloys or um, in a presentation on our user conference um, some years before, we had a customer who um, was modeling um, control maps of a helicopter flight dynamic and he used also a six-dimensional map for that. Oh, also, a new module is included in Simulation X 4.0 for co-simulation with Siemens PLC Sim Advanced. Um, the library, uh, no, no, the um, module contains an interface to connect um, the Siemens PLC Sim at Advanced um, so solutions um, with a Simulation X model for software in the loop simulation. So, software in the loop means you have the simulation you have the Siemens PLC Sim Advanced to simulate your controller code and then you can connect it with a Simulation X model to test, okay, how is the um, influence of this, the, of this um, controller code on my uh, machine or plant and, yeah, does it do what I intended? Um, the behavior to be. The library contain, contains on one side an interface element for coupling but also various transmitter and um, receiver elements. In Simulation X 4.0 we also introduced a new module with um, ready to use uh, model elements for modeling um, bound cables and here the goal is to evaluate um, the position of a bound cable, the movement, and also the transmitted forces dependent on the actuation. And that's the crucial point. Um, a bound cable, it behaves different when there um, is a force applied through the bound cable. Um, the bound cable, it um, changes its um, shape and also its position when there's a force applied. So um, it has a, um, yeah, so you can, you have to ana analyze, okay, when I apply a force, um, is my design space still valid or is there any contact or are there any vi vibrations which um, can cause damages when I have contacts of my Bowden cable with my chassis, for example, or I have undesired impact, impact noises. Also, Bowden cables are 
it's quite difficult to um, determine the static rest pole position and especially when I have it under preload, so it behaves quite different than usual cables. Um, you can use our uh, module Bowden cables also for um, evaluating um, the dynamic motion, both self-induced and externally induced motion also again under the influence of the actuating force and especially for precision movement and force analysis how it is essential for um, complex locking mechanisms for example in a car where I have the actuator um, no, where I have my lever of my release uh, mechanism of my hood, for example, in the cabin, and then the lock is then outside um, in the hood. Um, I want to know, okay, what are the effects on the friction between the housing and the cable itself? So we have the backlash hysteresis, which can cause the so-called stick slip effect, and also I have similar effects, um, for example, in medical devices like endoscopes. So this new solution for Bowden cables in Simulation X it offers a library um, for Bowden cable modeling, for clips modeling, and also for modeling um, the contacts between the Bowden cable and um, yeah, different other um, geometries and parts. And um, as it is usual in Simulation X, it is not a standalone version where I just um, evaluate the Bowden cable, but I can link it um, to the actuators and controls. So I can have um, an overall look on my system be behavior and can have a look, okay, how does the actuating force influence my Bowden cable and also how does the transmission of my force through the Bowden cable um, is influencing then um, for example, the lever the, or the lock I want to um, actuate um, at the end of my bound cable. The characteristics of these um, bound cable libraries are you can easily parameterize your bound cable um, system for example, um, based on CAD data, so there's an interface where you can import your Bowden cable CAD data into Simulation X. You can do then the simulation, for example, um, evaluate the static rest position, and again, you can export then the results back to your CAD environment. For example, to update the now determined and validated um, static rest position, and also to visualize. Um, the behavior of your bowing cable in your CAD environment. Now we covered the new modules, but also in existing models, which um, many of you will be already using. Um, there are many new improvement and extensions. Um, the first one I want to talk about are the signal blocks. So in the signal blocks, um, we have a new library called um, Clock Control System, and almost in every technical system today, they are digitally controlled um, devices. And this library is um, especially relevant when you want to integrate um, your control device into um, your system simulation. Um, you. It um, provides a way for easily um, mod modeling and analyzing these um, clock control systems. It is compatible to the Simulation X signal blocks domain and also connectable to the Modelica Synchronous Library. And the whole library clock um, control system is based on the Modelica Synchronous um, technology. The models in this library are made for efficient computation and for easy modeling of such clocked control systems. Also based on the Modelica Synchronous technology are the Mo Modelica state machines in Simulation X, which had been introduced in Simulation X 3.9, but now we have a completely revised and enhanced user interface, um, including presettings and templates for um, the states and transmissions you want to model. Um, you have now quick access to the equations and the algorithms, and even um, complex compound states, how you can see on the right side, so um, the blue one is a state, and as you can see, and within this, inside um, this state, there is an um, additional layer which includes um, a set of um, 
states. So also these complex compounds can be um, easily created using the compound state builder in simulation X4.0. We have also new table-based signal sources. So why did we new and uh, why did we need a new set of signal sources? So the current curve elements, which are still in simulation X and which are still, um, yeah, are still needed and are valuable for many applications. But these curve elements they represent the data sets of function as curves or maps inside the model. So the data is stored inside the model. And now when I want to change the properties of these um, curve elements, I have to edit the properties inside the parameters dialog. But now um, customers and our engineers, they had some tasks where they wanted to modify and exchange the data, um, for example with third parties, without having to change the model itself. I, I don't want to give uh, away all my, my model and do some changes, but I want to um, change the inputs or I want to store my um, data outside the model because I um, want to have it on my server or in the cloud or I want to protect my knowledge which is included in the, the data. And another use case is I want to use the same data sets in um, different models and when I'm doing changes on this data set, I don't want to do the same change in all the different modules where I'm using this data. I want to change it once and then it should be applied to all the other modules. And to um, solve this task, we came up with a solution to have um, four new um, source elements and four new blocks and all of them are um, table base. This means the data is stored outside of the model itself in a text file and you can store it in any location and then the data is read um, during the simulation from this file and is included into your system simulation. For those who are familiar with the Modelica Computable technology, um, these um, new model elements are based on this Modelica Computable technology. Also in the hydraulic library we have some extensions and new features. So the goal in the modelic library uh, in the hydraulics library was to increase uh, um, to to provide an uh, easy way to understand your uh, model structure, your model in the um, diagram view. And to achieve that um, where it made sense, we um, revised the icons, so we have now the icons according to ISO 1219, which makes it very easy for people who are familiar with this um, ISO um, 1219 to understand what um, your model is about. But also, um, for example, for cylinders or for such um, more complex, like, like 12, um, we animated now the icon, so it's easier for you to um, check um, in which state um, your system is during the simulation. I will have an example later on. And also, where it makes sense, we equipped the, um, some model elements um, yeah, with um, dynamic symbols according to the parameterization. So, for example, in a host, um, when I have um, parametered it with fittings. I have now also the fittings in the um, in the symbol and when I have no fittings then no fittings in the symbol. Or for example when I'm um, parameterizing such a valve and I see okay um, I can see it now in the icon itself is the spool is out of range for example. Now the promised um, example Okay, we don't see anything moving. Oh, now it works. Okay, what I see now, um, my cylinder is moving. I see now in which um, state my cylinder is. I see in which state my um, valve is. And I can also see um, the pressure of this um, valve, for example. And I can see different values um, directly in the diagram view during ring simulation. Um, also, um, in our solution for a subsea hydraulic um, simulation, we have a couple of new model 
model elements. I don't want to go into detail here because it's a real specific application for deep sea oil and gas exploitation. We are working for this field together with um, our partner, Agito Technical Dynamics. We have two um, libraries there, the subsea hydraulics and the subsea electrical libraries. And in the subsea hydraulic libraries, we, um, there are a couple of new model elements included in this library. When you want to know more about this, model elements, please contact us and we can give you more details. The bell conveyor module had been introduced in Simulation X 3.9. Now we um, also are able in Simulation X um, 4.0 to uh, model and simulate um, pipe conveyors and these pipe conveyor models can also include um, loads in the lower strand. So I have here the upper strand in this um, picture. It's now full and it's empty here, but I can show you later that we can also um, transport now loads in the lower strand and also all um, elements in the um, bell conveyor library can be also now um, computed according to the North American CEMA guidelines. And as a demonstrator for the um, convenient visualization, I see now it gets empty on the top and now the lower strain I get the load. Already known from the belt conveyor library, we introduced the uh, in Simulation X 3.9 um, a model generator to um, easily um, con to easily build such um, models. It's a interface. We just set your setting, and then all this diagram view is then um, um, uh, made automatically, and um, we now um, found out that there are similar applications um, where it, such a model generator makes sense, for example, in engine modeling, especially when you have huge um, combustion engines like in power generation or um, in shipbuilding. Um, so we included now such a model engine model generator in the combustion engines um, modules and also in the torsion of operation analysis. So the motivation here was to provide a quick and convenient way to include detailed excitation behavior of combustion engines into powertrain simulation and you should be able to um, create such detail model without um, yeah, the need to, um, to create the model by yourself. You have a convenient model generator for 1D rotational torsional operation analysis for inline and V type combustion engines including force and torque excitation and we can use this model um, engine model generator for one cylinder, two cylinder, ten cylinder so um, you're free to choose the number of cylinder you want to model. Um, these um, these um, modules generated by the engine model generator can be used for torsion of operation analysis in, um, both in the frequency and in the time domain and this combustion engines model um, also include elastic crankshaft. Just to give you an example um, of a six cylinder um, inline combustion um, engine created with this model generator on the left side and here we have um, a four cylinder uh, V type combustion engine on the um, right side. So we are coming to an end now. There is very much more I can talk I could talk about to today, but then we would have to um, make the webinar for two or three hours, I guess. Um, we have new icons, not just in the hydraulic library, also in the signal blocks library. We have a new multi-body systems belt model. We have also in the MBS domain we have a new um, tire ground contact, um, which is using the Cheka magic formula um, six point one. We have also new model element kinematic clutch. We have a new multi-body systems B, B model. And also, um, those who know Simulation X appreciate our um, big um, collection of sample models. 
also here we included new sample models for the new libraries, for the new features, but also for the existing ones. And also please have a look in our um, completely revised and enhanced help and tutorial section. So we want to make sure that when there are any questions coming up during your use of Simulation X or when you're getting started with Simulation X, you quickly find the help you need um, in the help section. And yeah, have a look at it and um, Otherwise, you always know you can contact us or your representative um, in your country. When you want to read more about the new version, you can also visit our website, um, simulationx.com slash 4 minus 0. There you can read and um, have a look at some pictures of um, some of the new features and modules um, presented in this webinar and also further ones. And when you want to go more into detail, um, please have a look at our release notes. You can see, you can um, find in our customer center. In the customer center, you can also access via our website, simulationx.com. Thank you very much. Now I'm handing over again to Christo for the Q&A session. Thanks, Thomas, um, for your presentation. That was a very extensive overview of Simulation X 4.0. Thank you very much for your time and joining us in so great numbers. We'll hope to talk to you soon. Um, thanks, Thomas, for your time as well, and I hope you enjoyed it. Have a nice day then, and see you next time. <laughs>